they don't use it. Some, they weren't using it, Collision, when I was casting with Haz. It, 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 angered, it angered me greatly, but looks like we're hopping right into it right here. So we got N Ness and uh, Link on the red team, and oh. we have Ken and Incineroar. That is some, some fire buddies going to go right into some damage here. But both teams kind of deciding to do a two 1v1 scenarios, each having their own corner of the ledge and fighting each other. Not really much interaction until we just got a little kerfuffle right in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I like to call the cluster ball of dubs, my friend. It's the kind of mo it's the kind of moment where there's too much happening that you can't exactly do too much of a play-by-play. Like, what just happened? You wanted me to, like, shoutcast everything that was going on right there? There were, like, <laughs> ten hits, literally, like, ten at once going on right there but so far the blue team with an immaculate lead right now but not exactly too much stage control Ness caught in the middle right now he's gonna get hit by the lariat of Incineroar right there tossing him off and Ness is gonna be the first one to go down I like exactly how Incineroar was using that stage control while um, his teammate was on the other side kind of focusing on the ledge creating ledge trap scenarios that Incineroar is like oh you're gonna go and over commit to get onto the stage mm -hmm. let me just punish you 100% I exactly love that kind of play in doubles where one person sort of has that sort of I'm not really winning the 2v1 scenario then someone just goes behind them and immediately tries to go, let me try to, you know, pincer them. Then their teammates like, no, no, no. It's all about situational awareness, my friend. That is the name of the game when it comes to dubs. Right now, neutral being fought for right now. And Incineroar, Rosalina is going to lose his first stock right there. Hazmat sitting pretty on uh, all three right now. And the blue team is going to secure a slight lead because of it with uh, Frunkapop, unfortunately, messing up his edge guard to what try and even out the game right there. All right. Stage control right now. Has not trying to forward. just fight Tadasu, but to him losing to Tadasu's forward tilt. But now we have another little smidge right in the middle, and everyone just going back on their own for two 2v1 scenarios. Mm -hmm. And the blue team securing the lead right now, and securing a little bit of stage control as well. They have regained center stage as uh, Hazmat is forcing Tad uh, Tadasu J right back off stage, and is continuing this onslaught edge guard. Really, he's landing every single hit, and then he just runs off and no, that is that a, that's a Haz who feels himself. I've seen, <laughs> it, I've seen it once or twice. I've casted with the man of collision. I know what he looks like when he's feeling himself, both in terms of commentary and to play. He hit him with literally every single attack he tried to hit on Tad. It is right there. What a gorgeous edge guard coming out from Haz. Ambrosa doing some good juggles on Ness, but. Immediately, Franco Pop juggles himself out of the scenario. We got the double. Yo, show me. This man definitely put all of his eggs in that basket. Get the mm -hmm. double dunk. It is not, unfortunately, just didn't quite happen with Incineroar. And Rosa takes the stock down. But Hazmat does have that extra stock on deck. So it is still a little bit in Hazmat and Rosa's favor. Both of them at 80%. This is not quite looking good for the red team over here. Yeah, yeah. The red team definitely needs to pull some sort of hat trick. I mean, first of all, what they have to do is that they have to kill Hazmat right now if they want any chance of bringing this back. Or at the very least, I mean, they, uh, if they can slowly but surely attack on this damage on Rosalina, like we see uh, Funko Pop doing right there. I don't yeah, know I, why he didn't go for the Yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, Funko, Funko Pop had a little bit of tunnel vision there. If he actually saw what was going on, they could have 2v1 the scenario, but instead yeah. he gave Hazmat some space. Instead of trying, he went over to Broza to try to end that stop. Instead of trying to, you know, 2v1 uh, Hazmat, uh, he ended up losing his partner stock, or Tadasu J, and I'm sure he's gonna oh, take it. Both of them God. launching up in the air. They knew they wanted. Look at. <laughs> you can really see Broza going right for the cross in the air, the cross did, top. Did you see that sandwich in between both of their uppies right there? It is one spicy sandwich. I was about to say, I've, I've never even had anything oh. that spicy at any deli I've ever been to in my entire life. Let's take a look at this. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was Hazmat's uppie that killed him. <laughs> look at that! <laughs> oh man, that was that was destructive. You you were dead one way or another. <laughs> one way or another, my friend. I do believe that was the initial hitbox of Incineroar's up though, so I think it was definitely Hazmat's up that uh, wound up killing him. And I think the uh, final frame, or like the final flash, final shot, whatever it's called, uh, was uh, struck when uh, Hazmat did his up But either way, it looked hilarious. So that's going to be Hazmat and Brosalina uh, taking the first game against uh, uh, brr, against Frunka Pop and Tadamus J. And um, I know it's a uh, smaller bracket. Is this still best of three territory, I assume? All right, yeah, I figured. I just didn't know if certain things are subject to change. My sincerest apologies. But, you know, that was really just good synergy by Hazman and Rosalina. Not just in terms of, like, their combos, but their stage they, control yeah, as they, well. Yeah, it, they don't have this quite, like, character-to-character -character juggle combos going up. Yeah. They sort of have where they're going on in the situation. They sort of have the idea, the situational awareness. That's what they're going for. We got a switch from Tadasu going from Link to Ike. And I think this is a little bit of a better scenario here. These wide hitboxes, especially with that Nair, is going to be able to challenge these double situations. That forward smash hitting Broza. Broza not reacting properly. I don't know if he wanted to try to get the down B reaction. Because he stood there, but unfortunately, I was looking at the rock side of the screen. And I just see yeah. a falling Ike. A being just a little bit 
well, way too prematurely, actually. And he's he's might, he might have third. gotten knocked off stage. Yeah, maybe. That might have been the case. He's just going to eat. He was high enough, though, to the point where it looked like he could have drifted. But either way, that's going to be uh, unfortunate for Tadasu's first stock. He's going to be going down to himself. But a back air to, on Rosalina by uh, Frankopop to quickly even that up right there. That's Kalos. Right. Especially that recovery from the cat ain't so great. It is yeah. extremely telegraphed, and that side B just allows you to get, you know, bared by anyone hanging on that ledge. Yeah, and these platforms might interrupt uh, certain combos coming out from both of these teams right now. I mean, certain nair strings that you would see on I can get interrupted by the uh, specific platform of the Kalos height. You know, it's not like the other stages where there are perfect heights to continue combos. Sometimes if you do like a rising aerial out of a full hop, you'll uh, uh, you'll land on the platform before the hitbox is even able to finish out. I don't know how that goes with too many of these characters, but I don't know. While I was making that horrible point, like four people died. So, so it is, almost, is, it is even. almost even. However, Franco ha does have about a 50% you know, um, uh, deficit against Hazmat, but both um, of them at like the two-stock, one-stock scenario. One-stock, one, two-stock, two three-stock scenario. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a curse right there. Then. Yeah. Unfortunately, these SD, not really SDs, but these early deaths from Ike have really been kind of the deficit. He's a little bit of a heavy, heavy character, and he just decides to not utilize that. And just let's... <laughs> look at just, oh! <laughs> can, can, we, can, we, can we please get a replay of exactly what led to the downfall of oh! that entire scenario? So you can see Incineroar charging entirely, and you see the pressure of the 2v1, both Nico unfortunately getting pushed back by Hazmat. That forward smash charge for days on end, charging up the spirit bomb and just letting it go. What? <laughs> I'm sorry we peaked the mic, but that was a very appropriate moment to do so. You don't even understand. 